My name is Adam Marriott, Category Manager for Easton Cycling. Today we're going to take you through the process of building a carbon wheel. It's a common misconception that building a carbon wheel is a highly automated process when in reality it's very hands-on. For us, building a single carbon wheel from start to finish takes about seven hours before it's put into the box. Today we're going to take you through each step. Um, step one, you'll see the carbon laminate coming in on rolls. Um, this is something where it's already a pre-preg carbon composite, so it's already going to have the resin system mixed with the carbon itself. It's going to come in on sheets of unidirectional fiber or a weave, and we're going to bring it to a table and then cut that into different segments. The table is then going to cut giant sheets. Um, that way it's going to get stacked up and transferred over to the Eastman cutting table. Once the fiber comes over to the Eastman table, you'll see yellow plastic goes over the top of the carbon there just to protect it. It's a vacuum table. The laser applies, gets set on the table, it gets sucked down with air pressure, and the Eastman will then, um, using a computer program, will cut out the various pieces of the wheel itself. The various shapes will be gathered and will get transferred over to the, the layup tables. The table there will be two ladies, one on each side. One side's doing the male side of the rim, the other side's doing the female side of the rim. On the preform, they have an aluminum core with latex over the aluminum core. They're gonna take those various laminate pieces that you saw being cut out on the Eastman table and lay them onto that half of the rim, right on top of that latex core. That allows a good compaction on the preform itself, so there's no fiber um, movement as you put it into the press. There's no chance for those plies to shift, so it's nice net shape. Once the two ladies have finished the preform, it's going to go into a freezer. Once it comes out of the freezer, then the latex has shrunken enough that you can pull the preform out from inside of that half of the rim. After the preform has been removed, the bladder gets threaded through the entire rim and the two halves are joined together. The final pieces of the laminate will be applied, making the two halves a complete preform. You'll notice there's still some plastic on the outside of that rim there. That's just there for protection. That will then get pulled off at the last minute right before setting it into the mold to make sure no dust or uh, other contaminants land on top of the rim, keeping it protected. The preform is then weighed and recorded. This is just one step of many of the quality control process. The preform is then taken, the tire bed insert is attached with the bladder passing through it and the honey dipper being attached to the bladder. Now the preform is ready to be passed to the molding room. These rooms are kept separate to keep contaminants between the two areas down. Step one is to clean the press. First with brush, then with a the vacuum, then with the rag and chemicals. It's important to make sure the press is clean so no contaminants will get on the preform. Next, temperature measurements will be taken at various spots on the mold to make sure temperature is consistent. The plastic is then removed from the preform and it's set into the mold. The remaining tire bed inserts are placed into the mold and the mold is enclosed. An air pressure is applied from the inside. This air pressure will push the carbon up against the mold and as it's heated, the resin will flow. This results in your net shape that's very consistent and without voids. You'll notice that the resin, which has, is on the outside of the rim as it comes out, is very even and uniform, meaning you've got good compaction and good resin flow throughout the system. The resin is then cleaned off and the rim is then weighed. At this stage, again, it's recorded and marked with the rim. It then gets passed into the drilling room. The drilling process is a two-stage process, which will first drill a hole from the inside of the rim, allowing access for the spoke. The second step will drill a hole from the outside of the rim, providing access to the nipple, as well as spot facing where the nipple will sit. The rim will then go over and get wet sanded. This is all prepped to make sure as we apply the decals and you know, the finish to the rim, it's going to have the, the look that's desired by the consumer to match you know, the high-end um, components that are going on the bike. The rim then travels to the decal room where the water transfer graphics are applied. This is a very thin graphic allowing us to save weight. It does need to be baked onto the rim for about 20 minutes. The protective coating of that decal is then removed and a very light clear coat is applied to the rim to protect the graphics. The clear coat is just going to be over the decals, not on the brake track. The brake track surface is masked, so it's just to protect the water transfer graphics from any chemicals or road grime. It's going to go to the rim QC process, 
Um, it's going to get weighed once again, make sure that there's no cosmetic issues. Um, it's going to get bubble wrapped and placed into a box ready to go to the warehouse um, for service or to the wheel assembly area to get built into a wheel. In the assembly room, they're going to take that rim and build it into a complete wheel. Step one is to take the hub and insert the spokes. The hub needs to be disassembled, spokes are inserted, the hub gets reassembled. At this time, they can check to make sure the bearing function works well and the spokes all insert through the hub cleanly. There, the hub and spokes will be attached to the rim. The technician will then thread the nipple on about halfway. This doesn't yield a built wheel, but it preps it to be ready to be trued by the technician. The technicians will then apply Loctite to the nipples and begin to balance the spoke tension on the wheel. As they build the wheel, they're going to take into account lateral, which is side to side, and radial, which is up and down movement on the rim, at the same time while balancing the tension on the spokes. Balancing the tension is the key aspect to building a good wheel. The technicians will pluck the spokes to listen to the tone. This will tell them what the tension is. Balanced tone means balanced tension. After truing, the wheel is ready for QC. The technician will take each wheel through a 46 point inspection. Inspection includes cosmetic checks as well as lateral, radial, and dish readings. The technician will also take the tension reading on every single spoke along the wheel. This will all get recorded into the computer under the serial number, so at any point in time we can correlate back to each wheel how it left the factory as far as tension on every single spoke, ladder ready on dish. If the wheel passes QC, it's ready to go into the box and get shipped to riders across the world to enjoy. From everyday riders like you and me, to champions like Cadell Evans and the BMC Racing Team.